So let's get started with a custom visual development. So let me minimize the portions that I do not require over here. So I do not require all those comments. And here, let me remove all the different variables and let me clean up all the different uh, code in constructor and uh, again all the different code within my update method as well so let me remove that and this one i will uh, comment it i will not remove it right now so to comment that just say control k c so now i have a bare bone structure that i can use to develop my custom visual so first let's work with the constructor constructor is the place where you will define the canvas or the sheet of paper where you would draw on and first within my constructor let me grab a reference to my options variable host object so this host object contains the environmental variables like which color to be used and so on and it is throwing a red squiggle that's basically because i have not declared the variable over here which i will do it here so within the class just declare the variable host as a private variable and in typescript you use colon to separate a key and a value or rather a variable and a value you do not use equal to so this will be of type i visual host so you get a rich intelligence and you just say high visual host and if you hover over this you see that this variable is of type i visual host next let's declare an svg element this svg element will hold a reference to the html svg element and svg stands for scalable vector graphics which is one of the two ways to draw colors on your html page the other way is html canvas but we will stick to svg element in this video so after you declare this svg element you can use d3 to manipulate your html dom once i declare the svg element i will assign it to d3 so here i am using the d3 library to create an svg element within the html dom and also assign a css class so if you want to do any styling later on we can grab the css class and do some stylings i will format it so that it looks better once we define the bars we need to define a grouping container for the bars so let me declare a variable here so the variable is bar group and this is again an svg element but this svg element will be the container of the individual bars so i will come down to my constructor and i will have this code here so let me uh, format it a little so what i am doing here is that i am grabbing a reference to this variable and i am grouping them within this svg so the g here indicates a grouping function and i am adding a class to this particular outer container so that if you want to style this outer container in any way you could do that and that's all we need to add in the constructor function next let's talk about the update function so this is the function that will be called by power bi whenever the chart gets updated so the visual gets drawn and redrawn and every time there is an update this function will be invoked so to begin with we need to have some data to work with so based upon that data we can draw a chart or a bar chart in this case but we do not want to get into any complex data binding so what i will do is we will create a dummy data set and we will work with that so to create the data set let me go on top just above your class and let me define an interface over here so this interface defines two different data points one is the category and the other one is the value the category represents each of the bars in your bar chart and the value represents the height of each of the bars in your bar chart but we will not be exposing this data point directly onto our bar chart rather we will be putting that into a view model and in the view model if you see 
the data points is nothing but an array of this data point and the maximum value is the number of or rather I should say it's a maximum value that any bar can take. So the each and every data point is encapsulated within this view model. This is actually not required, but for data resiliency or code resiliency, it is better to separate this. So once we do that, we need to define our data. So let me define the data within this update method. I have a code or I have already created this array of data and I will just paste it over here. So here we have a sample data set and each of the bar is represented by the data within this braces. So the category is a fruit and the value is 10 and there are five such categories and the value for the corresponding category is given along with it. So having defined the data points, let's construct the view model. So I have a view model that's already constructed and note that view model is nothing but collection of two points. One is the data point, the other one is the max value. And here I am assigning sample to my data points. So this is the entirety of my data set and then the max value I am taking it as the maximum value of all of these points. So this allows me to stretch my chart to fill the available space. And when the data point value is not that high, so it can shrink accordingly. So once we have put that within the view model, let's draw the chart. Let's grab the maximum amount of height and width that is given to our visual by the Power BI. So you are getting it through the options parameter and dot viewport dot width gives us the maximum width that is available and the maximum height that is available. So doing this way lets us dynamically scale the chart according to the space that is available. Next, we will use the attribute method on the D3 library to set the width and height of the SVG container element. So this width and height, we are getting it from the previous step and we are setting the maximum width and height allowed to this particular SVG element. Next, let's define the X axis and the Y axis. So Y axis, I have uh, this code. So let me uh, make it perfect. So here I am defining the Y scale as a linear scale and the domain of values that it can take runs from zero to the maximum value that is defined within this view model. And range basically indicates that you are changing from one coordinate system to another coordinate system. So let us not worry much about this particular code. But just know that we are writing this because there are different coordinate systems that your D3 needs to coordinate with and this is required for efficient coordination. Next, we need to define the X scale. The X axis is, is an ordinal axis, unlike Y axis, which is linear. And uh, your D3 will take the ordinal axis and uh, convert it to some other axis. And we need to define the domain of values, which is nothing but the category values, which are stored within your view model. And the last one basically indicates that you need to take the area that is present and you need to divide it equally between the different categories and point one indicates the space that is required between the different bars. After this, we need to add a code to bind the data. So here I have the data function, which is the core data binding mechanism in D3. It takes the data points within the view model and it binds the data into the canvas. Next, let's create code to create new bars and let me adjust them. And finally, we need to apply the attributes to the bars. So here we are applying the width attribute and the height attribute to each bars and specifying the scales on which they will lie. And finally, we need to add the cleanup function. So here bars.exit function 
will basically list down the list of bars that do not have a corresponding data point and the remove function will basically remove the bars that do not have those data points so that's it everything is done so let me save it by pressing ctrl s sometimes it doesn't work i'm not sure so i will go here and say save all once done let me start the server so i will just say P pbi viz start and once the server starts go into your visualizations and click developer visual at first you do not get anything that's basically because we need to select any particular field and once you select a field you get the data points and if you compare the values that we have given 10 20 30 90 they pretty much match with what we have given the height of the bars indicate the value size so congratulations we have constructed a simple column chart